Hi, we're at the wonderful location at Tre Kerry, which is on the uh, Lean Peninsula. This site itself is over 450 meters above sea level. It's, uh, it's been an incredible climb to get up here today. It's taken us a good hour and a bit. Uh, so we've gone the steep way. Uh, this site itself is a fairly u unique location um, in that uh, the height, um, in that it's one of the very few hill forts in the whole of Britain to have maintained a permanent population of people. As we know, hill forts across most of Britain, over 5,000 of them, uh, bear out that they were used to keep grain and cattle. But this locality seems to have kept not just animals and grain, but people for substantial lengths of time. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to um, visit one or two of these stone round houses. But the uh, cameraman today, Beth and Langford, will pan to behind her and show you a length of wall. Some of the wall itself, if you pan down, is actually three and a half meters thick. I'm looking at the length of this wall and just imagining that you can see a bit of a, a platform on the wall there where it almost looks like a walkway. It's probably much later, you know, added um, as one of those entrepreneurial things when they're uh, consolidating this site. But I, I feel, feel deeply that um, there's something really different about the context of Hillfort stroke, habitational stroke, stroke, something else. So I'll probably answer that a little bit later in this video. the entranceways leading into this pristine site um, as we go down here it's actually quite narrow but isn't that great The site itself is a bit of an anathema. It's difficult to really understand what's going on here. It's very different from most of the hill forts in Britain that I've visited or know about. The stones at this locality would be used to build the houses. You couldn't farm up here. To bring animals up here would be very tedious. To bring water up here would be very tedious as well in the summer months. So it makes me wonder what's going on here. This one is a bit disarticulated in its arrangement. It's probably because there's been seen a number of different phases at this site. It's not exactly circular like the others, like the earlier footage tells us. So whatever we're seeing here is whoever's living in this building, probably unlike a family, probably people being kept and looked after, have we seen to establish something very different at this site? What I'd like you to do, and what I'd like you to see, is one last building. This is one of the circular buildings, without the lengthy latest changes. And if we, if we actually go into this building, we can actually get an idea of the full grasp of this site. What we can see is a nice curvilinear building with an entranceway. It would have had a thatch roof, reeded roof. Um, and the walls were probably more or less about that height. Obviously, there's a lot of material deposited in here, probably a centralized half. But again, this building is fairly small. It's, um, it's to be seen again in a context that there's something else very different going on with this wonderful so-called hill fort at the Clean Peninsula. What you'd usually find at these types of sites would be um, stalls, 
um, for people to sleep in, stalls for animals to sleep in, stalls as well for grain uh, to be kept in as well. And it would be quite a small area indeed. As we're heading in this direction, um, this is the extra development. Uh, we can see that they're, they're clearly dividing um, the buildings at this, um, this site. And, and the straight linear walls at this site indicate post-Iron Age activity. Um, post-Iron Age activity, or very late Iron Age activity, that we see in places that use stone quite a lot, like Orkney and Shetland. And this tells me that maybe we can understand the date of the wall around this, this Iron Age citadel site, as I've referred to it. And the wall itself might actually be post-Iron Age. So when Roman civilization is collapsing um, and the last um, sense of Ro Romanized Britain um, ends in about the year 476, um, what we're seeing is these places where people are actually fleeing for some kind of sanctuary. Uh, you've got this wonderful citadel site, we'll call it again citadel site, uh, this wonderful outcrop of land. And what we're seeing is here in, in the Iron Age, about 300 years BC, you've got all these roundhouses. That's established, we can't deny that. Uh, Roman period comes along, reorganisation of the landscape. We've got Roman evidence here, we've got a wonderful um, a gold plated brooch being found here and other evidence. We know that something's going on here in the Roman period, uh, but not very extensive. But I think um, there is this extra change. As, as the Roman world uh, is collapsing, people are reusing these roundhouses, and that explains these linear walls, and that explains if we can pan finally. To this wonderful chunky three and a half uh, meter wall around the entire site and I hope this visit to this wonderful site has been as delightful to you as it's been as delightful to me this is Carl James Lankford Archaeology Camry thanks also to Beth and Lankford for filming this today um, thank you very much